My goodness, we're almost at the end of November already and I cannot believe all the things I managed to do this month for my art. So we are going to have a look at this kind of art vloggy thing. I'm going to go back to the beginning of November just because that makes more sense. So in early November, we went to Paris. We, you've probably seen my video about what I packed for Paris. If not, I'll pop it up here, the link. We went because my partner was presenting a paper at a conference. And, oh, if you heard that thump, that was my fat cat jumping off the bed upstairs. And so he had said to me, hey, why don't you come with me and we'll stay for a few extra days and you can do some museums and stuff. I was like, brilliant. We stayed at this funny little apartment hotel. We, I spent some time doing art. We, did evening events with the conference people. We got engaged. My ring is off to get resized because it didn't fit. We got a stomach bug and were sick as a dog for a week. I had to actually travel around the Louvre and travel back on the Tuesday, feeling like, well, not pleasant at all. And then my fiance came down with it afterwards. So he clearly got it from me. So we were out of action for about a week. Anyway, that's by the by. Let me share with you what I did while I was there. So we arrived and on the Friday I'd booked in to, well, I didn't sleep much on the Thursday. So Friday I had a lion. Then I went on a event, like an art event. And I've got some stuff here to share with you. So I went to the Petit Palais, which is this pamphlet here. Okay. The Petit Palais Musée de Beaux Arts de la Ville de Paris. My French is terrible. They have some interesting pieces in there. I didn't go to look at the art to be fair because I was actually there with somebody called Evelyn from In Art. And this is her business card. So I'm gonna show it to you in case you're ever in Paris and you wanna book a session. So I booked like a group thing where it was like a walking urban sketching tour of some of the areas in Paris around the Petit Palais area. Now the thing is the weather was terrible so we ended up going just to the Petit Palais and as well there's normally like a group of people but I was the only person to book on so it ended up being kind of like a one-to-one -one session. Let me grab my sketchbook. So what I wanted to share with you in here is just some of the stuff that happened while I was in Paris. So this was the hotel where we stayed. I was ill. Was I ill at this point? No, this was the night off, so I was really, really tired. My feet, the tiny little, it had these lovely wooden beams on the ceiling, and I just tried to draw it and do perspective -y stuff. We actually have stuff in different places in the sketchbook because I flip around. So we met here and in front of this building, it was raining, so she gave me the drawing. We went to the Petit Palais and we sat in the garden and she gave me this. And she had me do certain exercises and it was really interesting. But she said that I work in a certain way, whether, so this was two minutes looking at the photo, then she used the photo to cover my drawing so I couldn't see it and I had to do two minutes from memory. You can see I struggled. And then afterwards I had five minutes to look at the photo. And she said I tackled it in exactly the same way. Like it's like I put in the dividing line and then I went and I did the dome in a certain area and then I broke up this section and then I did the window. So I did it in a very kind of like consistent way. And she's got suggested that I do this on a daily basis with an object, with a photo, whatever, and just practice this. So I build up a like a vocabulary in my brain of different items and my hand gets used to drawing from memory rather than having to look constantly at what I'm drawing. So that was that. Then while we were sat there she also had me do this drawing of a leaf that she had picked for me using watercolour pencils which I was supposed to water over and, and I don't like this kind of thing. I'm not one for sitting there looking at a leaf so it took me ages just to get this far and I didn't enjoy it so much and so she called time on that. Then we went in and we looked at a sculpture the Le Danseus. I can't even read it but I used like um, a Conte crayon in sepia and I really enjoyed this she was helping me so much this is the first time I've ever drawn something like this because I'm not someone who likes sculpture generally and like I've gone to the Victorian album many times I've been to the British Museum in London many times and I always just like bypass the section where the salt sculptures are but this time I had to actually sit and draw one and we were there for probably about an hour really enjoyed it and so based upon that I ordered this Windsor & Newton sketching pencil set so I haven't opened this. I was supposed to put this in my art hall for November, but I actually already filmed it and edited it and it's ready uploaded. So 
and it's like a little Winsor Newton set and it has sepia which is the one that I used here and it has white and it has a 8, 8b and a 4b and 8b in graphite and then it has white charcoal sepia medium charcoal and hard charcoal so I thought well that's a nice little tin to carry around if I go to a museum in the future to do more sculpture things because it's something I would do if it was just me because I actually really enjoyed it but it's not something I can do quite sepia is it well, it is sepia, but it's not the same colour as this. I think I must have smushed this with the sanguine stump stick thing. So anyway, that, these I got so that I could do more of this because I really enjoyed this. And then she took me to see the Coronel de la Nuit, which is a sculpture hanging down from the ceiling. I'll put a photo here because I did take a photo. I went back and took a photo after she left. And it's made up of these like, so it's Venetian glass balls and it cr it's created to look like a, a crown and it moves very slowly at odd times and so it was really frustrating but she had me try to draw that too and I had to use colour pencils they were watercolour pencils and I was supposed to use the brush and make it look pretty but that didn't happen and then that night I was exhausted and so I pulled up a photo from my phone of a tunnel that I'd taken a photo of in Paris and I tried to draw it with some acrylic markers and Tombos and I really wasn't feeling it so I gave up at the Petit Palais, I wandered around the shop afterwards. It was raining, I didn't want to leave. I wasn't meeting the conference people until later for dinner. I had about an hour and a half, two hours, but they were only around the corner. So I went in the, I wandered around the museum after Evelyn had left it, was late night opening, and then I went to the shop. And in the shop, I bought myself. Well, first of all, I'll show you the postcards. I love buying postcards. I got this because, so Petit Palais, it is Jean Antoine Watteux, or Watteux, I don't know how you say that, but it's sanguine black and something white on paper, chamois paper. So I guess it's like white, black and sanguine crayons, but I really liked it. And if you have seen, well, you won't have seen it yet, hold on. But I bought this paint on multi technique mixed media with natural paper because I wanted to take my, I had bought these, I had found these at the art store i thought i would take these because they're less chalky than the jackson's pastels and i would use these in a toned paper so that i would have like shadow i would have like a natural kind of mid-tone anyway what happened was this ended up being quite weighty and the paper is not what i wanted like you can see the papers are really heavy it's almost like a cardstock or not i don't know i'm cardstock is like a heavyweight paper card that i use for pattern pattern making anyway basically it's like 250 grams so it's really heavy there's only 32 sheets in it but the book is quite weighty and i didn't want to take this one just on the off chance that i might use it so i ended up leaving it behind then i saw this in the museum shop and it got me all excited and so i was like well i'll get it because i can use it to reference and just practice it's always good to have these and then this was the Petit Palais Cezanne, Trois Banussi, I think it's the Three Bathers, from 1879 to 1882. And I saw this up close. I will put video footage over here while I'm talking so you can see it. But I loved this because I like the direction of lines on the trees. I loved, I like, I was getting up and looking at the lines on the, the back of this lady and around the the thighs and the buttocks here around the trees the direction and I just thought it was absolutely beautifully done and I thought well I can learn something from this this is like you know it's done in a different material I think it was oil and it's yeah oil 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 on canvas and I just thought and the colors are beautiful and I thought I can learn something from this I can do like a mini study of it and I'll enjoy it so I should have put that on the screen and you will have seen that closer up and then this one I thought was a bit weird and what I found funny is that it's kind of it's not that it feels old it actually feels quite not modern but it feels kind of contemporary like it doesn't feel as old as it is but this is from like 1888 so that's well over 150 140 years nearly 135 years but it feels like something you would see now almost like with the clown and the costumes and you know circus doesn't change i guess i love the frog on the front and i thought okay well i'm gonna get that and i can make some little studies of this as well and this is fernand pelez so those are the three postcards from the petit palais and then i got this book on le dunier douan du douanier russo josephine binde now oh this book is brilliant i've done lots of flicking through this and i love it <laughs> so russo was uh, so this means le dunier it's the the guy that's like 
I'm going to find it for you because I've read it and now I've forgotten it. But he is the customs officer. There you go. Look, the customs officer. He was a self-taught and he had a naive, naive style. And he was encouraged by his neighbour to study art and he submitted to expositions. And I just love his style. I think it is very sweet, very quirky. And I got really, this one I love. Like you see the little hikers, these little black shadows. And they're going up to the chalet. <laughs> I guess climbing up to a mountain chalet. And I just think that's really sweet and lovely. Again, it's like the coloured paper with the black and the white. Uh, maybe that's why I was drawn to it. And there are just some really love little, love? Lovely little um, paintings in here. And I just wanted to admire them and appreciate them. And look at that bear. Did you see the bear? And it's a really sad story because he lost his wife. And he was really, even though he was really sad and depressed, he still submitted work to the... Um, exposition they lost so many of their children <sighs> but anyway it's a lovely book so i recommend having a look at that if you can find one anywhere anyway so that was all the friday on the saturday again it was another conference day so i was left to my own devices until the evening and i'd been given this by somebody at the petit palais the day before so i had a flick through and i couldn't see anything that i really wanted to do and instead i went to well my partner had to be really early at the conference so we went over in a taxi at like eight in the morning i'm gonna put some video over top now while i chat and i ended up walking over because there's like not a lot open at that time on a Saturday. I ended up walking over to the Eiffel Tower and spending a little bit of time amazed from the view below. I didn't go up it because it's not my kind of thing but I looked up and was amazed by the structure and how it had been created all those years ago back in I think it was like 1890 or the early 1900s I forget now and I thought that was amazing and I had intended to maybe like sit and draw it but it was raining so I was getting wet so I left there and I went and found a place for breakfast Petit Dejeuner. The Petit Dejeuner? Yeah. I had like a pan chocolat and a coffee and I was going to do some drawing but then people came in and they kept looking at me so I didn't so I ate and I left and then I walked around in the rain and I ended up at the museum of Musée de Kai Branly Jacques Chirac. Now there was quite a bit to see in there and I was it was very warm and I was a bit frustrated because I was carrying so much stuff as well and I did some drawings and I did some more but I haven't finished them I've got a one I want to put on the page here um, it was another mask and you've seen those. I decided that I would buy a book from the bookshop on statues because it's a museum that my partner would really, really would love. But I knew he also wouldn't be able to get back there because I'd booked tickets for the Louvre on Monday and we were leaving Tuesday. And Sunday, unbeknownst to me, like he insisted we go to Montmartre and that's where he actually ended up proposing and so he'd basically blocked off Sunday for Montmartre even though I was like it's gonna be so busy he was like no no we have to do it because it'd be so cool so so I got <laughs> this book for him to look through because he'd really appreciate this and I thought it would be good for me to learn a little bit more because everything was like only certain sections were actually in English and so it was really hard to understand like I could get my phone out and I can take a photo and I can translate the text but I was like that it was getting busier and busier because I got there just before it opened and as the morning and the afternoon wore on there were just so many people and it was frustrating me to be like squished and so I just bought this book at the end because I knew there'd be a book there. I also got I look I got to look at the fancy cloths which are cloth that's made in Africa to commemorate certain periods of a lot of it's political so it might be like a certain visitor from another country like a political leader visiting or some such thing so it was kind of interesting to see it wasn't really exciting but it was okay and I also bought myself a bag a cloth bag to carry everything because I had taken this book with me and art supplies and yeah that's kind of that so that's really all the art I got to do because on the Sunday we went to my Marcha got engaged so then I didn't really think about drawing because I was just being like oh yay woohoo then on day after what was the day after Monday we went to the Louvre I'll put some video over now when we got to the Louvre I'd been feeling ill on the Sunday evening so I wasn't too hopeful that it was going to be successful we there's so many antiquities we went straight for the Mona Lisa and I took a photo not of the Mona Lisa but of the crowds of people who had their backs to the Mona Lisa while they took selfies and it was quite shocking actually to experience that. I just don't understand why you would go to a museum to take a selfie. Like, why don't you try and get as close as, I mean, I know you can't get close to the Mona Lisa, but like at least try to look at it from where you are, you know? So it was really disappointing to see the kind of the, the, the tourism aspect of it. 
and we walked around we looked at as many paintings as we could get close to and then my partner was like let's do the antiquities antiquities is not my thing like lumps of rock and pottery from thousands of years ago doesn't really excite me but he also hadn't been to an exhibition the whole time we were in Paris of course you know I booked tickets for the Louvre for him so I stumbled along after him but I was really really ill by this point like it was a vomiting stomach bug and it had implications and I had to keep running to the toilet and it wasn't pleasant at all and David wasn't aware I wasn't vomiting at that time so I wasn't contagiousing every I wasn't being contagious and infecting people but I just constantly felt like I was going to vomit it was extreme nausea really really unpleasant and I felt like I didn't feel like I could say let's go home to the hotel we were staying at because it wouldn't have been fair to him and I don't think I think because I was pretending it was okay he wasn't aware of how bad it was until and I had to travel home the next day on the Tuesday on the different train feeling awful and uh, he caught it the day after and he was in bed for like four days he's like how did you do all that you did I was like well you know determination you hadn't done an exhibition I really wanted you to see something of Paris so that was Paris what else can I show you in November I also so just this past weekend I went down to Amsterdam and I went for a one-day workshop so I had booked onto, you know by now that I love the various Patreons that I'm a member of. There are a couple, Sarah Dongans is one that I've been in for probably about four or five months now and I love it. And in this sketchbook there's quite a few pieces of like drawings from different live sessions from Sarah Van Dongen, Sarah Dyer, TJ Marston, Katie Moody, they're all in here and I'll show those at some point. But I actually booked onto a one day workshop. It cost me 150 euros, it was a lot more expensive than I had anticipated but I wanted to do it and I'd said I would do it so I did it and then the travel from where I live in the Netherlands down to Amsterdam is about 60 euros return as well plus eating out when I was there I had to get some lunch and it just ended up being a really expensive day but at the same time it was really really worth it so let me take you through what I have from that day so I had tried I had anticipated actually kind of like vlog style recording it but unfortunately I was well unfortunately or not I was too caught up in the moment so I think I I did some video clips on my way there I'll put them insert them over the top of me talking now if I did and then when I got there I was just like obsessed with being there so the first thing that Sarah had us do was play she gave us a piece of paper and she told us to just scribble not scribble she said just play with the different materials put them on like paint straight from the tube play with your fingers do stuff and this is what I came up with and I think we had like about it was definitely less than 10 minutes and I really love the colors <laughs> It's not something that I would sit down and think, oh, I need to do this. But like, I was just like smushing colours together to see what happened. I was getting different materials. So there's some like student grade oil pastels here. There's some neo colours. There's some like pencils. This was like a Stabilo Woody, Stabilo Woody. There's gouache. And I was smushing my fingers in and then I got some pencil and I was scraping it and just playing in a way that I wouldn't normally do because I'd be too precious about the materials and I really like it it's you know it's not a piece of art it is just a page of scribble but I love the colors and the vibrancy so that was that and then the next thing she had us do so we all got a sketchbook as well I sat down and at the back of the class because that's what I do there were only eight of us there it was a beautiful spot creative space and I grabbed this one because it's pink and why would you not have a pink sketchbook and we worked through because it was a workshop she had some things that she wanted us to do so this is now going to be my illustration sketchbook and this was from the workshop in Amsterdam and she she we talked a lot about color theory about mixing colors about hue value saturation and she would point to different things and we had to color match so she gave us a palette with some gouache on that she'd prepared and on each there were two yellows two reds two blues one being a warm and one being cool and we had to mix them and experiment and it was so much fun and it reminded me of why i love swatching because quite often David will say to me oh you're swatching again and I'm like I get for him it's like oh you're just swatching but for me it's a way to really understand colors and how they mix and stuff so we had she pointed to a sofa and eventually I mixed various colors cool versus warm in order to get to the right tone and then her t-shirt this is not quite right it needs to be a bit more pale I should have added a bit of white to this one and then we had to select like different pencils and we had to grade them from warm to cold as a selection and this was like random selection you couldn't like sit there and 
pick them you have to just grab a handful and then how they related to each other and then yeah making something desaturated i can't remember what these ones were for now I should have made more notes but i was so caught up in just egg having the fun and then we had to create a small palette a color palette where you had to choose three colors she said don't give her like red yellow blue like think about colors that work together nicely and then she created like a still life there was like a teapot and a plant and a jug and a cup on the counter and we had to do a drawing and then um like an illustration of that i didn't do the drawing part because i was too busy doing this part <laughs> And then the next thing was we had to choose a photo of a face. And then there was also a full body one. I'm not sure where that one is. Like um, a full length one. So here, this was a 10 minute drawing. And I was doing it really nicely. And then the girl opposite me had said to Sarah, oh, I'm really struggling. I'm being too perfect. And Sarah said, okay, well, let's do like a one minute timer. So I was like, okay, well, I'll join in with that. And in one minute I had this, which has so much more energy than this, which is a bit too perfect. And I chose this image because of woman's skin tone and hair I was like that's going to be a challenge I'm open for a challenge and ha huh, my days we then had to do it in color and an under material that we wouldn't normally work in so I used oil pastels and I think that took me about 15 minutes and I really struggled you can see the skin tone isn't dark enough I have got the orange reflection but I haven't got her skin tone right <sighs> but I tried and then the we had to do it in colors but we had to change things up so this is more illustrative she's got like avatar skin now but that's because i was working with a limited color palette and i didn't want to throw like a darker tone in there so that was that then let me put that back there so i've got it then 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 the other image that i chose was this one so i did a six minute drawing timed it i did three minutes but i wasn't quite finished so i threw another three minutes on and sarah was like duh, 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 uh, which was quite funny and then i covered it over and from that i had five minutes to do this in just two colors so it was really good at getting me to experiment and free free myself up and then the final hour ish because we were there for quite a few hours the final hour was well hour and a half actually was to create thumbnails of a project something that we wanted to complete as an illustration and i had gone in there thinking i would make christmas cards i took some reference images of robins my family like robins if you get a christmas card with a robin on it then you're special and so i thought i'll make some christmas cards with robins i'm hoping my dad doesn't watch this i'll have to tell him not to watch this <laughs> but anyway so i put these robins in and i realized that they were too big like that's a robin on fence there's robin on this big tree it's like they're unrealistic so i said to sarah about it she said well why don't you make like something a bit more funny like a bit of dark humor like if your family think robins are great what about if there's something terrible in the picture but you have a robin and so it's like but it's okay there's a robin and i was like oh well, that's a good idea my dad always worries in the winter about the storms like breaking his greenhouse so i drew a picture that i thumbnailed out a greenhouse with a robin and then i came up with a color palette i didn't do it here i did it on a separate piece of paper and i seem to have lost it and i created this little illustration so it has like three robins all perched on his greenhouse that's been broken from the storm but there are twinkle lights and there are robins so it's all okay and for this i used gouache and then i had neo color well i did gouache at first and then i went over with color pencils and then i used some uh, neo color to just bring out a bit more texture and i really enjoyed doing it and par if you're watching it there's your christmas card so that was that and then as we were leaving because it was taking me so long to travel back I had to leave quite soon after I think I left 8 15 p.m and I'd been I'd been in that area since like one it was a long day I left at like nine in the morning and I think I only got back at quarter to midnight so it was a long day but as I was leaving Sarah threw this envelope at me we all got one an envelope of her prints and I just wanted to share some of them with you because her work is really lovely I actually discovered Sarah via a domestica course like an online course site called Domestica and I took one of her sketchbook classes which I really enjoyed and then I discovered her on Patreon but I didn't realize it was the same Sarah Van Dongen. I think I found her on Ill Ill Instagram actually and I went through and followed her Patreon and I was like oh I like this I'll join and then I was like oh you're Sarah I did your class but aren't these just the loveliest illustrations she has a really lovely style and yeah so I'm really really chuffed that I also got these as well I showed them to my other half and he's like, oh, I don't know, it's not my style. I was like, yes, but it's so lovely. Like, all that texture. Anyway, so that's what I did this past weekend. And 
aside from that, November has also been, let me actually go to one sec. And aside from that, November has been a month where I've worked, been working with this one pen. And so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to discontinue these hobby notes because nobody seems to watch them. They are my worst performing videos on my channel. Maybe it's because I call them hobby notes. I don't know. But anyway, I have this Pentile brush pen and I really, 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 really enjoy using it. Um, I'm not very good at using it. I did use it here and I was like before this I had used it in here so I've been basically working with it to try and get good at it so with the November practice this month I wanted to really focus on just using one pen you know aside from the other things I did and I chose the pen towel brush pen with the currently it has an empty cartridge I do have another one spare but I also looked up how to fill the cartridge using like a syringe an ink that you already have. So I want to test it with a platinum ink, but I don't have a syringe yet. And then I decided to use this little Talon's Art Creation sketchbook. You can see it's quite a small one. I had used this previously for other stuff, not much, like random pages. And I thought it's a nice paper. When I first got the sketchbook, I was doodling, as you can see. And I quite liked the bold graphical black on white, even though it's more creamy and white nature. And so I started on the 17th i think it was that one first i just went in and blacked out that drawing ignore that that was from ink tests from when i got my coeco this was acrylic that i'd put on a page during a canvas pro moment i think i'd scraped it on and i wanted to go over it with the black ink so this is me sitting in the bed of the snug we came back from paris and were quite ill and then my partner caught it and so i didn't want to be in the same room and recatch it so i slept in like the spare room we call it the snug and there's like the tree the laundry cupboard the door opening and i really enjoyed just sitting there feeling miserable drawing as you can see continued these are actually from like doodles of watercolor that i then just enhanced and then again this is the snug so there's the laundry basket the curtains and then you're looking outside the window and you can see the corner of the house because we have, we're living in a dutch house it has a very pointed slanting roof and this was color that was on the page already so just trying to work with what i already had there the same with this one again sitting on the bed and looking towards my partner's computer and his desk and all the books and the rug so not really doing much in terms of technique just kind of getting used to how the brush pen worked these were two jars of brushes and pens on my desk and this was Ian Fennelly. Just a quick sketch while he was talking on a screen on an Urban Sketch Plus video. Doesn't look much like him, I have to say. Making use of colour that was on the page. This was acrylic again that I'd put down there as leftovers on a roller. And the same here. This was actually with Posca's done a while ago. And then I said, I'll challenge myself to use this brush pen throughout the month so that I can get better and more skilled. So just playing around with the different line textures. Going around some fruit. This, my partner was reading a William Morris book of poetry in bed and my cat was curled up next to me. So I, I got very meta and I drew myself drawing, drawing, drawing <laughs> what was in front of me. Again, my pen top brush pen, my sketchbook, my hand, avocados, scissors on my desk, practicing, trying to get work with different line weights mint the indoor plant my hand again this was again a page with color already on it so i drew my sewing room window it was nothing was happening at the time i made out like this was a curtain even though i don't have a curtain and there's a lamp right outside my window those are from ages ago what was that and then i did a katie moody i was watching a katie moody video and i did this and at this point i realized that actually i prefer the fine line so i started adding in my food a sailor pen just for the fine a line work can you see i was finding just the brush pen to be a little bit too black and a little bit too brushy and i wanted some of those more scratchy even though it's scratchy that it's still more precise and it's not as brushy as the brush pen so i added that in afterwards that was on the 23rd and then this was looking at our local pub i'm doing continuous line with this and then i went in and added some color not color some additional line work with the food a and it was a continuous line <laughs> apart from the windows afterwards those were after these ones and then this is my dining not my dining room my sitting room with a radiator staring out the window it's raining and again the hatching here this was done with the food a because i couldn't get the light even though i am getting better at getting a finer weight finer line weight 
with this when the ink is drying out it's impossible it becomes very scratchy and dry brushy but i again it's the combination of the two lines that i really like rainy windy days it literally rains around november and then this is from Ian Fennelly, he, I watched a replay and he was showing some of his work and this was Robin Hood's Bay. So I did a quick scratch, scratch, a quick sketch of that again with brush pen and then details with a food A. Then this is the view from my sewing room proper. So without the lamp, I have like canal boats because we're by the side of a canal in the Netherlands and trees. And I just wanted to play around with different weights. Again, for the most part, it was the brush pen, but then I went in and added finer lines with the food A. So you can see that quite quickly Quickly, I got a bit frustrated with the limitations. What I see is the limitations of the brush pen. And I started to introduce the Fudo pen more and more. Then on the 28th, it got really, really snowy. Uh, so I tried to depict that haze of snow. I could see a tree. I could see this is right in front of the canal boat. I couldn't see the canal boat, but I could see the shape of the tree. I could see the curb. I could see the trails in the snow. And I could see the car below. So I just tried to capture that as a memory, really. And then a Georgian cup of wine on my desk because I was pretty participating in a zoom and then I think we're almost at the last pages my camera which I use for videoing next to my wall on my desk and then this was at my office there's a big plant that we have so I try to capture that while I was there and then my cat who was just being so cute last night curled up next to me so I try to do it my partner says that it looks like a spider and I need to put legs on her and I'm like I think it looks like a cat right and that was just this pen and it was while it was running out so it kind of looks a little bit out of focus because it's all very scratchy and odd um but yeah so that was me experimenting with the pen top pen i think this month i'm going to be focusing on mastering my tombow brush pens this is a sudden on the moment spur of the moment decision so um i have a selection i don't have a great selection but i i have some nicer colors and i have some terrible colors but i think this month i'll focus on brush pens it's december and we'll see how i get on with that i'm probably will add other mediums in as well but i'm going to try and make sure that the base of everything i do is just brush pens and i'll probably continue in this little book until it's finished because it's a nice little one to take out and about with me so that's my creative rt vlog for november thanks so much for watching i hope something was in interesting or inspiring in some way and yeah let me know what you're up to for the next month in december for your creative rt hobbies and what you got up to in november um do let me know in the comments below give the video a like please if you got this far it just helps me to know that people are seeing it and i will see you on wednesday for a new video um yeah so thanks so much for watching take care and i'll see you soon bye